It's time to take a look at what's happening around Wyoming for Friday, October 18th. I'm Wendy Kaur, bringing you headlines from the Cowboy State Daily Newsroom, brought to you by the Cowboy State Daily Morning Show with Jake. From 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, Cowboy State Daily's Jake Nichols brings to life the latest news, weather, sports, and in-depth conversations that matter to you. Well, after weeks of perfect fire weather that's fueled two massive wildfires in the state, Cowboy State Daily meteorologist Don Day says a much-needed cold spell has finally arrived in Wyoming with the potential to blanket much of the state with snow. Wyoming is a large state with varied terrain, so the impact of the winter weather pattern moving across the state Thursday and Friday won't be the same everywhere. That's according to Cowboy State Daily's Andrew Rossi. What Wyomingites can expect broadly across the board is that there's going to be a lot of snow in the mountains. We're talking a foot or more in most of the mountain ranges. There's going to be enough snow and enough strength in this cold weather system for snow to fall in the lower elevations, but it's not anything that's going to stick and not anything that's going to be shovelable, as Don put it. The cold temperatures and snowfall are answered prayers for hundreds of people who've been fighting the Elk Fire in the Bighorn Mountains, which has consumed 96,000 acres so far. But Cowboy State Daily's Renee Jean reports that the Thursday morning raindrops, which turned to snow, has only stalled the fire, not stopped it altogether. I'm told by both the meteorologists I've talked to and the elk fire officials, it's probably not going to end the fire. It's burning too hot. There's not going to be enough precipitation uh, and it's not going to last long enough before a warming trend comes through and kind of dries everything out again. So it's not going to be the fire ender that we're all hoping for, but it's definitely going to give these firefighters a big shot in the arm when it comes to containing this fire and keeping it under control. Don Day did say that this is the beginning of the end of the fire season. A Weston County effort to add two seats to solely represent their county in the Wyoming legislature is moving forward. The Weston County Republican Party on Wednesday selected three candidates each for a new state Senate and a House seat that the Weston County Commission is attempting to create for the upcoming 2025 legislative session. Cowboy State Daily's Leo Wolfson reports that the commission is making its play based on a clause in the Wyoming Constitution, which Weston County leaders say entitles every county to its own senators and representatives. The Weston County Commissioners, or a majority of them, believe that the current state law for deciding legislative districts violates the Wyoming Constitution, and they are taking it upon themselves to create new districts to represent themselves. It's not clear how this is going to move forward once these people are picked and whether they'll be given a desk and legislative responsibilities at the legislature when it convenes in January, but it's going to be very interesting nonetheless. The Weston County Commission plans to choose from the six total nominees at a special meeting early next week. Well, the search for body parts in a field south of Cheyenne is finished. A construction worker discovered human remains Monday while mowing a field north of Terry Road. The finding prompted a two-day search in which 50 officials searched in grid squares so they wouldn't miss anything. Cowboy State Daily's Claire McFarland spoke with a representative of the Laramie County Sheriff's Office who said searchers have found all there was to find. They think it's going to be a really long investigation. They did not give me a timeline. They still don't have things like sex, age, length of exposure. So it's really just them saying, we got everything off to the coroner, ultimately the forensic anthropologist. The remains are now in the custody of the Laramie County Coroner's Office, which is coordinated with the forensic anthropologist to identify the body. And now let's take a look at today's weather with Cowboy State Daily meteorologist Don Day. Well, we're waking up and starting our day much cooler and more wet than we've seen in quite a while. We're going to see another batch of rain and snow moving across the western, southwest, and northern parts of Wyoming today. Kind of the second wave of the storm that finally came in yesterday. Now, today and tonight, do watch out for wet to slick roads. Most of the lower elevations will see rain and a little bit of wet snow, especially above 7,000 feet. It'll be the mountain passes that will be tricky to navigate as roads and highways will be slick over those mountain pass areas through tonight. Hard freeze conditions likely tonight in many areas of the state, especially the west, central, and the north. Now, for the weekend, we will see some clearing. 
Dry conditions will return to central, northern, and western Wyoming for Saturday and Sunday, but it's going to be cool. It's just going to be fall finally. We'll see some lingering shower chances in far southern Wyoming as we get into late Saturday night, Sunday, and early Monday as the system will clip the south. Then we'll start next week with a little bit of a modest warm up, a couple of cool fronts mid to late week. The next stronger front, well, that's going to arrive next weekend, and that'll be something to keep an eye on. Have a great weekend. You can get Don's full forecast on the Cowboy State Daily website. I'll be back in just 20 seconds with more news. When we say community is the heart of Hilltop, we're talking about a team of bankers committed to improving the place we call home. A team that shows up every day to help businesses thrive and gives back to our neighbors through time, attention, and service. We're inspired by the way our bankers give back because that's one of the many qualities that makes us truly a community bank. Hilltop Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The violent death of a Montana man at a remote campsite near the Wyoming border was probably at the hands of another human and not a grisly mauling as first reported. 35-year-old Dustin Jersom was last seen alive on the afternoon of October 10th as he was heading to go camping in a remote spot near Big Sky. The Belgrade Bozeman area resident was evidently killed sometime between late October 10th and early Saturday, according to Outdoors reporter Mark Hines. He was supposed Supposed to meet with a friend either Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. His friend found the campsite, found him dead in his tent at about 10 a.m. on Saturday. The friend called it in initially as he thought it was a, it had been a fatal grizzly mauling. Upon further investigation, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks didn't find any evidence of a grizzly having been in that area any time within the time frame. Autopsy revealed that he had died uh, by suffering chop wounds. The sheriff described the, the, the attack as violent, brutal. Authorities are seeking tips from anybody who might have seen Jerson's black 2013 Ford F-150 pickup during the time frame of his suspected murder. The Jackson Police Department is asking for the public's help in locating a local hotel employee who disappeared under mysterious circumstances a month ago. 30-year-old Bragine Collins of Pennsylvania was last heard from September 14th when she called in sick to her shift at the 49er Inn and Suites in Jackson, where she'd worked as a guest service agent for the past year. That's according to Cowboy State Daily's Jen Coker. She was a guest clerk at the area hotel, and she typically shows up for work, or if she doesn't, she calls. It. And so this time she called in to say she wouldn't be there. But the next day she didn't turn up for work and nobody heard from her. And her manager said that is very unlike her. After she didn't hear from her on her scheduled days off on Monday and Tuesday, she then got maintenance and HR and did a wellness check and found her room empty. The manager thought something was not right. It felt like something she had left in a hurry. But of course, it's all speculation. Nobody knows. Collins is one of three people currently listed missing in Teton County, according to the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation's Missing Persons Database. A man already facing a potential life sentence on claims that he confined and tortured a woman in a Laramie apartment now faces another felony charge on claims that he pressured his victim into recanting her statement. 41-year-old Brenses Jimenez is accused of duct taping the woman's mouth and head, punching and choking her and cutting her with a knife because she disrespected him. That's according to Cowboy State Daily's Claire McFarland. The new allegation is that Jimenez was texting someone, an operative, like, we're going to break her will, we're going to break her soul for messing with me. And the the claim is that that is to try to get the victim to recant. And in, you know, whether it's coincidence or not, the victim did recant. She sent a letter to the judge September 6th. The charge of intimidating a witness is punishable by up to 10 years in prison and $5,000 in fines. And Welcome to Wyoming is getting a new postcard look at every highway entrance to the state. The Wyoming Department of Transportation designed the new signs, which feature bold, colorful photographs from around the Cowboy State. And what happens to the old Welcome to Wyoming signs? Well, Cowboy State Daily's Andrew Rossi reports that those will likely fetch thousands of dollars at auction. 
Now, you'd think what kind of market is there for an old welcome to Wyoming sign, but Doug McGee, YDOT spokesperson, told me that the last time they sold five welcome to Wyoming signs on publicsurplus.com in 2017, they raised over $30,000, and a third of that was just from one sign. One of those signs sold for $10,000, and all the money that's generated goes back into YDOT's funds so they can produce more road signs that add to the safety and the photogenic nature of Wyoming. The first of the new Welcome to Wyoming signs was installed along U.S. Highway 85 south of Cheyenne, and more were put up Wednesday on Highway 120 north of Cody and U.S. Highway 310 near Franny. And that's today's news. For a deeper dive into the people and issues that affect Wyoming, check out The Roundup, conversations with the most interesting people in the Cowboy State. A new episode drops tomorrow when I have a conversation with author, photographer, and longtime Yellowstone winter keeper, Jeff Henry. You can find the link on our website, on our YouTube channel, and wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you'll find it in our free daily email newsletter. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Wendy Core for Cowboy State Daily.